Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh with another episode of the THD podcast uh, coming from Hong Kong as always, uh, this year especially. So uh, our our co-host from Japan, uh, Simon Weston, how are you doing today, Simon? I'm very well, thanks Dave. All right, and uh, special guests calling in from the Bay Area, I believe, uh, James Chang from Summit Wireless. Hey James, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Very good. So uh, Summit Wireless, as I know, is is kind of a like the higher end of, of wireless audio systems. Maybe I don't want to I don't want to pigeonhole you, but so maybe you can tell us a bit about the the history of Summit and uh, what kind of markets you try to attack in. Right, I think uh, certainly uh, <clears throat> I think uh, so far from the uh, uh, customer penetration uh, perspective, we generally stay with the higher end brands. Right, we are in BNO, we are in Harman Kardon. Uh, you know, we are in, uh, uh, you know, system audio. So these are kind of premium brands. They are more to come. I would like to think we are probably the, uh, uh, the probably the biggest fish, I guess, for the high end uh, uh, wireless, uh, uh, you know, audio pound. And we, I think we can only expand. And uh, so I think uh, hopefully next year, you're going to see more and more brands are going to uh, switch from whatever they have been using and to uh, some wireless solutions. Okay. Um, and so maybe, uh, did you want to share some slides just to give yes. a bit of history? Yes, I do. Okay. okay. Slow down. Uh, let's see. Guess, uh, share. Even though I've been doing this hundreds of times, I still uh, <laughs> times have a bit of a challenge here. Share screen. Okay. Share. Let's just share the full screen. That makes things easier. Otherwise, I always get into trouble. There we How go. do I? Okay, I... so this will be here probably. And uh... oh, sorry, I uh, should maybe just start from here. Present. Okay, perfect. so this the uh, this comes uh, come up. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. All right. So uh, Sony, uh, what, so today Sony, uh, I am from uh, Summit Wireless. I run sales uh, at Summit. Certainly, I also touch uh, kind of our sister organization, uh, WISA. Uh, certainly, that's a, that's a kind of a very important part of our go-to-market strategy. And uh, so I will explain how we are uh, working together and how those are, uh, you know, how, uh, how the market is kind of we have been trying to uh, uh, develop. So okay. in a nutshell, right? So Summit uh, Wireless uh, is a really is a technology uh, provider, right? So we have our own ASIC. And uh, fr from ASIC, we also do our own modules. Then we supply the uh, modules to the, uh, the customer, like a speaker manufacturers, uh, maybe a, a ABR box and the setup box and uh, whatnot. And WISA is an organization that's created, uh, 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 founded by Summit, uh, with the goal that you have a multiple brands, they can work uh, uh, together, right? So, you know, basically, uh -huh. It's not like kind of close the ecosystem. It's a it's a it's a open. You can have multiple brands, and they can uh, from the from uh, from the source would be like a TV or ABR, and to uh, the speakers, right? So these are kind of a uh, we have multiple brands. They they join uh, WISA, and uh, so that's uh, how we see you can grow this a new category of a uh, 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 products. So that so that means like somebody buys an LG TV or a Samsung display, they could partner it with a Harman home cinema system. Is that how Definitely, it works? Right. right, so that's the goal, right? Certainly, uh, you know, certainly uh, we are uh, expanding the uh, on the TV partners, right? So, and also expanding on the speaker side. So generally you are not stuck with only one vendor and also depends on, I guess, your, uh, uh, your uh, I guess, uh, audio, you know, expectation, right? So you can choose all the way from uh, BNO, probably at the $50,000 a pair down to, you know, you know, people will have a sell the home uh, uh, home theater in a box at something like a, a seven ninety nine. You know, with a five dollar one you know, uh, system, they, they all interoperate together as long as they are WISA certified. Okay, very cool. Okay, so maybe talk a little bit about uh, Summit. Uh, Summit is a is a is a, is a U.S. based uh, a company. Uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, like myself. I'm. Uh, I think uh, Dave already mentioned. I'm based out of the Bay Area. And so that's where the corporate headquarters is. The R&D team actually is, uh, uh, they are based out of Portland. 
uh, we come from the heritage. So some used to be part of Silicon Image. And uh, so at a time they were looking uh, as an opportunity, uh, you know, so go from the video side of things at a time from HDMI. And they also want to get into uh, audio. In the end, they uh, uh, spun off uh, Summit to become uh, an independent uh, company. So since then, we've been kind of a, kind of a create our own path, right? So we have been uh, uh, slowly but surely to get into these high end, high end, uh, uh, you know, the audio systems. We already mentioned about Harman Kardon, CAF, LG, Eclipse, and the BNO, and we have many more uh, uh, to come. And uh, so we are the founding member of WISA. We're going to share a bit with you what WISA is, and uh, we just go from there. Okay. So. Uh, so I would assume this podcast will probably target to a little bit more uh, technology or engineering crowd, right? So I would just start by maybe talking about the WISA or some uh, wireless uh, technology. So uh, certainly this design was a goal, right? So very easy to set up and also uh, expandable. So you can go from the uh, like, you know, uh, like a high quality, just a stereo pair and all the way to uh, uh, 7.1 or 5.1.2 system. We can support up to eight channels, right? So uh, then suddenly uh, you can mix and match with uh, uh, YSA certified products. Suddenly, oh. uh, you know, the uh, you can set up, the goal is really take a minimum time to set up a home theater system, right? So you just take things out of the box and you, you plug in the power, voila, it's done, right? So, uh, and uh, that's uh, suddenly, that's how the goal is. So we are also, uh, you know, we are probably one of the few, I, w- I would say the only, but I'm not 100% sure. We transmit uncompressed uh, uh, PCM uh, audio, right? So all, through these all eight channels. And so we can support up to 24 bits and the 96 hertz uh, sampled uh, data. So it's almost like a, 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 the same as a, a you know, a analog, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but this go for all the eight channels. We can do that, uh, you know, at the same time. And uh, also the design goals, we have a very low latency, right? So it's a fixed uh, uh, latency, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a really uh, latency can be 2.6, kilo, uh, 2.6 for 96 kilos uh, 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 data or 5.2 for 48 uh, 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 kilohertz, right? So the latency is fixed. So make the design on the system side fairly easy, right? Right. Something, right. We also manage the, you know, the, you know, the synchronization among all these different uh, uh, audio channels at the one micro the second. Uh, yeah, I think I, we are probably the best uh, spec wise, right? So yeah, I think uh, just for for people listening to reference, I mean, Bluetooth latency is typically about a hundred milliseconds. So uh, when you're talking two point six or five point two, that's a dramatic, and uh, not only movie sync with the rear channel speakers, but also, you know, gaming gaming sync. People using uh, their home cinema for gaming there'll be no latency on the performance. So that's a, a very key feature um, that, that's often overlooked right? when uh, the, the brands are deciding which wireless solution to use. A low latency is a key uh, aspect. Yeah, I also think one of the thing, uh, one of the benefit we bring to the table is because it's fixed, right? So uh, what I've, you know, what we found out if you uh, design an uh, OTT box today with uh, you know, uh, Android or Linux, uh, a lot of times, uh, the they, the uh, the OTT box itself, they have don't, or the TV, right? They need to design. Uh, there's a lot of ver- uh, you know variables from the operating system itself, right? So what we hear is that we have a low latency, also fixed. So make it there, so they can focus on their part of the uh, design. Don't have to worry about us. Can just treat us as a as a kind of a, a wireless pipe, or you know, so they they don't have to uh, worry about the, too much, right? Right. Very good. So also, uh, so we also engineer to have a, a, a very little uh, audio dropout, right? So I think that's the uh, biggest concern uh, for people using a wireless audio, right? So you need to, in, in this uh, uh, ISM band, this unlicensed band, right? So you need to compete with other uh, devices you have a, a, your, in your house, the, the Wi-Fi devices and things. So uh, certainly we operate at a five gigahertz band, the 5.8 gigahertz band. And the, we, the, the, the main difference is we use the DFS band, right? I'm going to ex- 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 expand a bit more, you know, what that means and in, in the next slide. But in general, that's, or maybe we can just go, just go there, right? So, uh, so, so DFS band is really, is a, is a, is a, is a you know, is a dyna- dynamic frequency se- uh, uh, selection. 
So these are the bands in the middle of uh, of uh, of this chart here, right? So in this uh, in this picture here, so it's a uni two band here. So these are used to be uh, used by uh, the satellites, right? So these are they are considered incumbents. So they have a first right to use. Okay. So they're you know so if they don't use it, then we can certainly uh, they can be used as uh, ICM band. But because of they are they are incumbents, they have a uh, they have a first use right. So there's strict rules for how these bands needs to be preserved for them first, right? So we need to monitor these bands, make sure they are clean before we jump into it. And also if they should come back to use this, uh, come to use this band, we need to vacate it, right? So there's a, you have to monitor this very carefully. And, uh, you know, uh, as I said, each country is a, a different. So that actually increase the certification, uh, uh, you know, requirement. If, as you can see in this uh, graph here, right? So US only, and like uh, Europe and Japan, you know, uh, the Korea. So all these, uh, uh, you know, we can use all these bands. The United stream would be China. China only opens uh, four uh, uh, channels here, right? Yeah. And also, uh, you know, Canada and other places, you have some, you know, restriction. You just have to be yeah. sure that you, you, you operate under each government's, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulation. And yeah, I, think, but, uh, yeah. I think in China, the 5.8, they use it for the auto tolls on the highways, I believe. So ah, that's the okay. conflict. And Japan as well in the upper end, they use it for the, the auto toll on the highway. I see. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so from our perspective, right? So, you know, certainly the, the more bands, uh, uh, you know, we have the, the, the lower chance for, for us to be uh, interfered. And it's something we, we can make the uh, the audio uh, transport, uh, you know, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as much higher quality. Mm, very good. Okay. Uh, so just uh, jump into the uh, the actual uh, design itself, right? So uh, as I mentioned, we do the our I have our own uh, ASIC. Uh, we we design the module use off the shelf uh, you know, as transceivers. So mm -hmm. if you look at here, right? So in order for us to uh, be able to uh, support uh, uh, DFS band, we man uh, literally we have a, have building another radio here just to monitor uh, the these uh, other channels, right? Or you know, or just make sure you know we are not uh, violating uh, any DFS band rules. And uh, so Sony is almost like I can see we have two radio kind of a, uh, you know inside this uh, module here. Uh, other than that, certainly, uh, you know, the design also, uh, in order to optimize, we have also have a, a building uh, antenna. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the module also is uh, pre-certified. So we are, uh, you know, certified in EU, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, certainly North uh, America. We are actually uh, doing certification for, for China. It should be done, uh, the latest will be uh, by the end of January next year. And we're also in Korea. So, so basically all the major uh, markets uh, they are uh, these module are pre-certified, and uh, so just make the our customers' life a lot is easier, right? So they can just take this, and uh, they just need to do the FCC type of certification, and uh, they, you know, just off they go, right? Interface was pretty standard, right? So it's uh, I square S, and uh, you know this the, the audio co uh, control either through USB or I square C, and uh, you know so it's a it's a you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a, maybe it's a, a little bit bigger than what people would really like, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a, you know, there's a, you know, uh, you know, reason for it. You know, we have to have two radios here, and uh, you know, so also there's a lot of uh, need to deal with a lot of is, you know, interference issue. Make sure so we optimize really for the uh, best RF uh, uh, performance. So, so basically, the one radio is is sniffing for trouble or places That's that correct. they're not supposed to be. And then the right, other right, one's right, uh, right. maintaining the transceiver function of indeed, the indeed. audio data stream. Right. Uh, one thing I think I forgot to uh, mention was uh, this is really designed for in-room use, right? We designed for a nine by nine meter by nine nine meter room, and okay. so uh, you know, so all these uh, latency and uh, sync and uh, I, I mentioned er er earlier, those basically is for the in-room, right? So we think for multi-room, you already have uh, other services, right, coming from Google or Amazon. And you have those, uh, uh, you know, uh, capabilities there. So, so you no. Know, so we are kind of complement to uh, what they offer. Okay. All right. So maybe just a bit of a to the uh, Arx, uh, you know, module here. Uh, Arx is, uh, it thinks, uh, is uh, I guess uh, the most of things is certainly is one radio, but also it is, a, it is a, has four antennas 
uh, kind of uh, uh, built into the uh, module itself. So give us a spatial uh, you know, uh, diversity. So the algorithm is really optimized to work with these uh, four uh, antennas, right? So that's a kind of a, that's another way for us to ensure that uh, even operating at a five, uh, 5.8 gigahertz, we, we could uh, get a good uh, uh, reception, right? So for the uh, uh, in-room uh, application. Okay. All right. And uh, right, so these are just a, yeah, so these are, so we, um, the, 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 our, our customers generally, we offer these two uh, modules and everything just a kind of, a, you know, so if they design their own entire product, right? So they just take these two modules. We, we have a, a, a sales teams uh, in, uh, I think, uh, uh, have a, a, at least one person in each of the uh, major uh, uh, markets, like in China, in Taiwan, Korea, in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, for North America, it would be myself. There's another FAE in Europe. We work with a rep. And uh, so, you know, so basically we have our uh, customer all covered there. Okay. Uh, one thing I like to mention is uh, this uh, kind of this uh, kind of a sub assembly product, right? So I, the example we bring here is uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the kind of this uh, trans transmitter and the receiver coming from Hanson as an example, right? So they have this. Uh, uh, these are uh, uh, plug-in uh, uh, modules, right? These can be just uh, maybe convert a passive uh, uh, speaker into an active and a wireless speaker is fairly easily, right? So at least I know there's uh, at least uh, two or three customers. Uh, they use uh, this uh, uh, module at, uh, here. And so they, for each of their speakers, they offer, you know, kind of three different SKUs, right? So it would be passive, active, and WISA, right? So also, so, so basically give the uh, the uh, customers kind of an easy way to get started, particularly a lot of the, the uh, speaker manufacturers, they are probably, uh, they are specialists on the audio side of things, right? So uh, they may or may not want to be deal with some of this uh, radio stuff, right? So that I think this is kind of a, a good way for them to get started. So so any any brands, no matter which factory they've selected to, to build their, their, their cabinets, they could they could have the sub-assembly supplied by Hansong and just drop into their box, uh, depending on passive or visa. Sort right, of right, product. indeed, yes. All right, that's very cool. Okay, so that's a bit about the basic uh, technology itself, right? Then I think the other piece of it is uh, maybe is how we go to market, right? So how we, uh, you know, so uh, make things more interesting for consumers. Okay. So the idea here certainly is that, uh, you know, so we have the, we, we call the source side. So, you know, so we, you know, source can be a TV, can be a game console, can be an AVR OTT box, right? Can be, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about these uh, dongles we are uh, building. And also certainly uh, for kind of a, like a, for the uh, 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 customers, they use the uh, primary use for audio, right? So basically they use it for the wire, uh, cable replacement and mm -hmm. so they have, uh, you can just use a, a audio hub, right? Those, this is just for stereo. Goes to all these different speakers, can be stereo pairs uh, or the, uh, you know, the uh, a home theater uh, in a box. Okay. Okay. So wow. YSA has been, I think it uh, has been there for maybe five years now. So there are 60 uh, plus members. You can probably recognize some of the brands here and yeah. I will not go to each one of them. <laughs> but in general, uh, the, the members, right, they are divided into kind of a uh, five, uh, four different uh, categories, right? We have TV uh, partners, right? So, uh, so you know, so uh, we think, uh, uh, you know, these are the source device. They can, each of them take a different approach uh, looking at the market, uh, how best for, for them. They can either choose to have a wise uh, the transmitter module built into the TV itself, or they can take a kind of a device ready. So do some sort of the, uh, you know, uh, aftermarket, you can plug in a, a USB dongle or HDMI dongle to convert the TV into a transmitter device. Okay. And uh, in the middle part, well, these are the speaker partners, right? So uh, for Harman, they do everything, right? So they they, they do, uh, the speakers they have a sound bar, both a transmitter device, also uh, just a speaker. And they also uh, doing some uh, hub device. Uh, BNO is, is also like that, Savant, so, so I think all the uh, kind of the, 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 the customers we list here, they are all fall under that uh, uh, category. And we also have uh, ODM uh, uh, partners, right? They work very closely with us and also our customers. 
the goal is only to bring the, uh, the, uh, the, the customer's product into a uh, uh, market. So DFS span is a bit of a, you know, kind of a different animal. And so uh, for, you know, for uh, new ODMs, we, our experience, it takes a bit of time for them to uh, kind of uh, uh, get used to it. <laughs> so uh, can uh, smooth out the uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, process. Uh, we also work with these uh, other partners, right? So we have uh, we work with uh, uh, THX uh, has this uh, uh, tuned by THX uh, program. So uh, that basically uh, because the RF um, RX module, the Wise RX module also has the uh, uh, DSP built in. So uh, so we can kind of preload the THX uh, uh, tuning parameters. Right, so then kind of making the uh, the uh, the uh, end customers uh, speaker product uh, the easier easier to tune. The, all these parameters will be stored on the uh, uh, summit uh, module here, and so they would, in the end you just need to send the, the final product to THX and just uh, do a quick uh, uh, validation, and then there you know, may be some minor adjustment. Then you know, so then will becomes kind of a, a tuned by THX uh, 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 products into the market. Is is there uh, any is there sorry to interrupt is there any issue between the mix and match nature so if you have your your left and right and front channel from one brand or your rear speakers from another brand can it all be how, how do you make it so it could be THX compliant in a in a mix and match scenario Yeah mix and match is a bit challenging right so because if you have a front speakers they are THX tuned and the the, bat, the, the, the rear speakers they are not then I'm not sure how to deal with that. Uh, generally, okay. our customer base uh, today is really uh, is uh, all for the uh, kind of a, uh, the entire system, right? Enclave they have a certified by uh, THX speakers, and uh, so the Platinum speakers is also that's tuned by THX. Uh, we have more uh, to to come. So these all come from one brand. Okay. Uh, Stream uh, Unlimited is only that would be a, it's a, it's a well known uh, design house, right? So they 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 work with a few brands. So uh, we work very closely to uh, basically also uh, integrate, uh, you know, some solutions into uh, uh, their customers' product together. So bring that into the market. So just a bit of a plug for Wisa here. So uh, you know, so we, uh, uh, you know, so you know, there's a we certainly we are pushing this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Wisa is really doing a good job in terms of increased uh, awareness and. Uh, uh, you know the uh, also the uh, the kind of a, the benefits of a, a wireless uh, audio, and it really shows from the uh, the uh, 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 website traffic, and uh, they also have uh, doing things that right basically yeah. to direct this traffic into our customers or the WISA members, right? So this kind of the, the way create kind of a, a positive uh, uh, feedback and uh, you know try to you know try to kind of uh, get the wireless audio into every home. Okay. So uh, just uh, uh, TV, I think is, uh, you know, we have uh, three new brands uh, launched this year. Uh, and uh, so LG, they already, I think, has uh, launched the Wise Ready TVs last year. Uh, I think that, uh, and that, uh, this year they follow up with AK TVs and also uh, uh, you know, projectors. Uh, Harman's, uh, I mean, not Harman's, a, a B&O Harmony, the AK uh, TV is launched in June. They also still have the Wise Up kind of uh, built in to the issue of the, the, the TV. Then I think in August, uh, Skywars Mets, uh, you know, they, uh, they announced the, uh, this uh, sculptor, sculptor, that's a German word, and uh, you know, maybe I was saying it wrong. So, <laughs> so, that, so uh, that, that's uh, basically, they also have a wise up kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, built into the, the TV itself. You're gonna see more uh, TVs coming next year uh, in a different, uh, configuration. So, so generally you have a three way, right? You either have a wise up TX built into the TV and uh, you can use USB and or HDMI. I'm going to explain it a bit more on the USB and uh, HDMI. So these are just uh, some of the sample uh, speakers and uh, you know, these are all wise up, you know, uh, certified, right? So you can see uh, you have a very high end. We mentioned about uh, uh, like, uh, you know, B&O, and also for Harman, they sell this uh, 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 home theater in a box. And these are what I think is uh, the last time I checked, probably around uh, $1,500 for a $5.1 you know, system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so suddenly you have a 
it's others, right? So uh, Savon is the one you really focus on install uh, you know, market. So you can, these are wise speakers can be integrated in, with their uh, uh, kind of home monitoring and the control uh, uh, system. And, uh, you know, so because wireless is giving a lot more flexibility for the installers. And uh, so for system audio and, uh, you know, Buchar, they're certainly very audio uh, centric, right? So they, they, they sell pairs and, uh, you know, all these customers doing you know, uh, pretty well. And uh, yeah, so we were some look at, so we are, as I said earlier, right? So we are, for the high-end audio uh, customers, they are really see us as a, a cable replacement, mm -hmm. right? I went to high-end show last year. I mean, uh, you know, the cable, you know, the, 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 the speaker wire itself, right? It's really expensive. Boy, you, then you have to buy these, these risers, right? To make sure they don't touch grounds and create uh, other capacitance of things, boy. So yeah. that can be, itself can be a huge expense right so but uh, i think we are uh probably as, you know as good and uh uh from those very high very uh you know exact expensive speaker wires so yeah you know, that's yeah so yeah, yeah so are, these, are these units uh, shipped that the uh, transmit is built into the subwoofer box and the receivers uh, are these rounds so that depends right so harman Kardon, the way they they do if you look at if you buy the tower uh, yeah. One of the tower has both transmit and receive, and the other has only re, uh, only receive. Okay. Uh, the goal, is, the, the reason why one of it has uh, transmit and receive, because then it can maybe work with the, this uh, sound bar can work with as a, a center, right? So this has transmit. So then all these can become you can have a kind of five out one uh, system. For system audio, uh, it's a receive only. They they actually have a hub. Uh, that they uh, offer, so that that's I think each customer has a a, a, a bit of different approach uh, when they bring product uh, into the market. I see. Okay, yeah, I just I just would add a comment about the speaker cable. Um, I have a history with uh, hi-fi stores, and a lot of people might watching might not realize that the expense. You talked about the high-end show in Munich. I mean, some of these people are putting incredible expense into their speaker cable. Um, with just the impedance and, you know, can be a, sometimes approaching a thousand dollar a foot for, for right. a really high end speaker cable. And then some people even change the wall plugs to gold plugs in their house, thinking that that improves wow. the audio signal. So um, a, a, a robust uh, RF link is uh, is extreme benefit because we always talk in and it doesn't drop out is critical like because the distortion of a dropout what is that on a thd chart so it's um it's really exciting to have a, a rock solid link that truly can replace uh, the cable yeah well certainly that's uh but okay just just have a bit of a disclaimer right so in the end is a you still you still have to to work with the laws of uh you know, physics right right uh, just uh if say for whatever reason or the DFS bands are used, or that, or you know, by this, you know, the twenty something satellites <laughs> at the same time, yeah. you're bound to have a bit of issues, right? So, uh, but but I think, uh, but the chance for that happens is really really low, and right. uh, you know, so we have a clean channel. So it also brings that even in a kind of a, a urban a droughting uh, type of a, a, a situation, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, 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 you know, you have uh, apartments, right? So they're all close together. So we always have in, uh, enough channels and for for uh, for the uh, for speakers to you know that for the system they are close by together. You know they can work. Uh, example, Sony is that you know like a uh, trade shows, right? Like CES or uh, yeah. uh, CDA, a lot of these shows, right? So uh, you know, so uh, you know, we, we have actually very good uh, you know experience even in a very difficult uh, environment. Okay, very good. All right. So uh, maybe talk a bit. So one of the things only uh, I think is, uh, uh, you know, we, we I mentioned a bit of for the high end uh, audio space. Right. But I think our strength, the other strength that we bring to the table so is because we can support eight channels. Right. A on compressed channel at, uh, you know, 24 bits and, and uh, 96 kilohertz. Right. So home theater is one of the area we think that there is a room to improve. Right. So uh, particularly with Adobe bring up, uh, bring out uh, Atmos and the things. Right. So that's the things we have been kind of, uh, you know, uh, working in the past uh, 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 a couple of years. So one of the things uh, 
um, on, on the TV side, right? We, we have been working on thing called Wiseout Ready. Wiseout Ready, what it means is that you have a, you, you need to do some software uh, update of the, uh, of, of the TV uh, itself. And then the, uh, then the, uh, so that you can, you can direct the audio uh, that decoded audio from the TV to the, uh, to the USB port. So it's use a, use a, a support a USB 2.0, uh, you know, audio, right? Then you can pair with these uh, WISA transmitters. These are come kind of with a, a, you know, USB port, uh, USB plug, then basically then you can work with any of the WISA, you know, uh, uh, certified speakers. So it's just like, uh, you know, because the, so it's just, a, this is the, uh, the back of a 2019 LG TV, you plug the USB port here, uh, the, uh, the dongle here, then you can see, you know, also because of the, uh, the software work there is, is integrated experience, right? So basically uh, the, uh, then the, the TV will just through the USB dongle here, you can just find the speakers. And so, you know, you just set everything up. Right, so you know you can set them at uh, you know uh, you know center, uh, left round, right round, and the left rear and the uh, right rear. Right, so those can be you know just uh, everything just can be done on the uh, on the on the TV uh, uh, the uh, kind of uh, user uh, user interface itself, and it's kind of a, just a very f a familiar uh, uh, experience. Uh, you know the the the, the uh, uh, consumer has with that uh, particular, particular TV. Then suddenly, mm -hmm. you know, it will tell you you are actually connected to a WISA speaker system, right? So this, uh, you know, there's a WISA logo here. Things can can, uh, uh, so you will adjust the volume. So things are just 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 very clear. Suddenly, there's a downside of this, right? So the downside for uh, for the WISA ready is that there's a uh, quite a bit of work needs to be done on the TV side, right? So you because the USB port is not typically used for uh, uh, you know audio. Right. So uh, and so there's some work that needs to be done. Also, there's some a bit of a UI that that uh, uh, that needs to be done here. So uh, uh, today, uh, I think L uh, LG is the only uh, uh, only brands that offer Wi-Fi ready TV. Uh, okay. There may be two more coming next year, but that will be uh, you know something uh, for us to uh, to uh, to uh, to watch. Okay. Uh, so. So to address uh, the issue, right? So uh, on the this uh, uh, the uh, uh, the USB integration issue, and uh, so we also work on this uh, this uh, uh, we use HDMI, right? It could be eARC and uh, ARC, right? So the idea here certainly is this, right? So all the modern uh, TVs uh, has ARC, and I think of, uh, today there's only two brands has eARC. It would be Sony and uh, LG. I think starting from next year, you're going to see probably most TVs will have an eARC, right? So then you send there. So this is basically you can just direct your audio through the HDMI uh, transmitter box. Then you know from this part will just be the same as a typical uh, kind of a, uh, WISA, uh, wireless audio uh, application, right? Uh, uh, so sorry, maybe, maybe I missed it, but what was the E in the eARC? What was that function? Uh, it's enhanced. <laughs> okay. So generally, it's uh, really from the uh, uh, HDMI standard two dot uh, two dot one or two dot two. So it brings a there are two features here. Uh, well, actually three, right? So I should say the three. So ER basically is, uh, supports higher throughput. So you will be able to transmit two HD uh, from the uh, you can pass through two two HD uh, audio uh, uh, signal from either uh, uh, from TV or the uh, Blu-ray. Right, so that's okay. one. Uh, the second one is that uh, uh, he, uh, he actually has a, a give you timing information. So basically, the uh, the device, the connected device, the audio device here, can feedback the latency uh, information back to the uh, the source device. So oh. so basically, so it's much so give you much better lip sync, uh, right. uh, you know, control. So they could right. control the buffer on the video feed to match. Right, 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 right. right okay. Right, right, right. right. So that's a basically that. I think that's a you know what you know the the the, the main uh, uh, features uh, eARC and ARC. Uh, you know the eARC particular you know bring to the table. But even if you don't have uh, eARC, then I think then the uh, certainly the, the the source device the TV will just recognize okay there's no eARC I use ARC instead of a, a true HD I just uh, uh, send out uh, uh, Adobe's Digital Plus. Right, 
So we'll still be, so it's not uh, un uncompressed audio, BB, but it will still be good uh, surround sound audio. Okay. Right? So that, that's a, so that would just happen uh, automatically, right? So, uh, uh, so we also uh, design it in such a way that, so, so each of these uh, 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 HDMI TX box has a Bluetooth uh, for control, right? So the control, so, uh, you know, so certainly there is a basic uh, uh, a CEC uh, feature here. You can do maybe, uh, you know, uh, power on and off. They can do volume up and down. But for the uh, fine tuning, right? So if you want to do kind of a, a speaker tri a trimming, you want to adjust each, uh, you know, each individual speaker volume, or you want to do kind of a some sort of virtualization, everything those can be co uh, controlled through a mobile app. Okay. okay. So that's a uh, kind of a, just a uh, you know kind of kind of uh, puts this two world uh, uh, together, right? So certainly the goal is only again, right? So we want to have uh, as many uh, TV brands that uh, we can work with and connect with all these uh, kind of a uh, wise up uh, speakers, right? And uh, you know, with the benefit of a, a, a quick uh, 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 setup, you can really, you know, you can start with a, you know, uh, maybe from two thousand one, you know, three thousand one, you know, you know, uh, 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 setup, then right. So that's probably a typical sound bar, right? So you can very easy for you to expand that to five thousand one, even five thousand one dot two, right? And so there's no wire, right? And uh, you can, TV today really becomes your kind of a, a information center, right? So everything go through the uh, stream coming, you know, this Spotify, Netflix, right? So this audio video all coming through your uh, TV. So basically you, arguably you may not need a, 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 a AVR, right? And, uh, you know, so, wi uh, so Wi-Fi is already in your uh, TV, right? So the, uh, so basically, so this is kind of a, just to supplement your existing system, make the most of it and to make it better, right? Mm. Okay. Uh, I mentioned a bit about the, uh, on the, on, on the CEC side, right? So that, you know, so basically you can use the CEC so you can do basic uh, control, right? Since uh, the apps is really done both on iOS and also on Android, right? So, uh, at least for the most, the good part of Asia, right? So uh, uh, it's a really it's a Android TV based, right? So uh, we actually have a, a, a say, uh, you can port this app to uh, from the, from the a mobile phone, Android mobile phone to Android uh, 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 TV, right? So we're actually working with the one customer now basically to, to get that. So then you basically, again, you can use your remote uh, Control the TV remote control give you kind of a similar kind of a TV use type of user experience, right? You can use a remote to do all the things, and uh, you know so that that's a uh, so for me is uh, you you this opportunity for us to maybe to bridge the uh, gap for now, so you can enable all the TVs to be you know become a home theater center, right? So you can just have uh, this the, the the surround sound instantly, then also you know in the maybe the starting from maybe mid next year. And you're going to see, you know, there's a, you know, there could, there could be much better integrated uh, user experience coming, right? So you have, you can have see the Android apps being potentially pre-installed on some of these uh, uh, TVs coming, right? Okay. So yeah. Okay. So I think that's uh, what I have. Uh, right. Yeah. I'm a bit curious, uh, James. Um, what? How do you go about uh, pairing or connecting devices? Right, so uh, the pairing, uh, so uh, each of these uh, speakers, right? So, uh, uh, so okay, so I, I, let, me take, uh, let me take one, uh, uh, you know, one, uh, one step back. Some, some uh, customers, they ship uh, uh, speakers pre-pair, uh, pre right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's probably the easiest way for the uh, uh, consumers. But so there are customers, so, but each of speakers, generally there's an easy way for it to, uh, to be reset it. So basically you, you just uh, have to press, there's a, like I say, the uh, uh, pattern speakers I have here, you press the button uh, uh, in the back for, uh, for like a, uh, uh, 30 seconds and it will bring, bring into, uh, you're going to take that to the uh, uh, pairing mode, right? So once the, in the pairing mode, then, uh, so then you just go through the user's interface on your TV or your source device, then you can just pick each of those uh, speakers. And so where they should be placed. 
I see. And then um, speakers, uh, the uh, RX side ha identifies itself as uh, left surround, right surround, or you, you choose that yourself. Right. So each of these uh, module, right, or the speakers, it has a, you can have a pre-assigned location ID, but the, but then the, uh, so you, you can use that, but also on the TV, you can reassign it, right? You certainly, if you have a, you know, you have a, you know, this a large, uh, tall uh, tower speakers, you probably don't want to move from left to right, right? So, <laughs> so you just, just reassign there. So yeah, so oh. that, 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 that just can be done. So, yeah. And so um, uh, speakers would generally be uh, mains plugged into the mains always on. Uh, so each these speakers like uh, needs to meet the uh, EU's uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, requirement. Generally, well, I guess it depends on consumers. I guess U.S. consumers probably just leave it on all the time. I'm sure in Asia, in Japan, Taiwan, people probably want to turn it off. Uh, you don't have to, right? So, but uh, you know, but if you uh, uh, leave it down. You're going to consume uh, uh, milliwatts, and you know so that that's uh, how how this thing is uh, designed. I see. So it would it would have a standby mode when there's no transmission. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, uh, I think there's a there's a CA65, the California initiative for the sleep mode for power well, all across all devices. So there's a low power mode when things are plugged in and not not functioning. Right. And so does a uh, does each speaker need an MCU or some other controller for that uh, board? Uh, for for the speaker, no. For the speaker, generally is uh, is uh, can be very simple unless you need to do. Okay, so so I have I have, I have to take one step back. So we have the basic uh, 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 DSP capability there, but it's not really not that easy to use. <laughs> so uh, there's a uh, we. A lot of our customer, they maybe just put a TI deck there. You know, you, you can, uh, you know, or a serious uh, logic there. They can control. They can do the, you know, DSP there. So the option is there, right? But you know, so but but a lot of our customer choose uh, uh, the tool they are more familiar with. Okay, and so uh, uh, on the receive side, on the speaker side, you have your, your receive module, let's say you're using the module and you get an I2S stream out of that. So you just run that into your codec. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, Indeed. okay. Yes. And um, uh, so uh, yeah, in terms of those inputs and outputs, a speaker will have uh, this RX module that's receiving your input. Uh, but you mentioned that one of them is you, you could also have input and transmit. So it becomes a little bit more. Oh, uh, so that, that's not uh, on the same module. So I think uh, for the uh, Harman power speakers, they actually have both the TX module and the ARX um, uh, module. They have two modules on that speaker. But with that said, right? So uh, the ARX module does have a transmit capability, but it's not for, it just sends some uh, kind of a quality data back. We need to have a sample loopback, right? So you know, basically, as a, for the uh, transmitter, he uh, the TX module automatically uh, decide on which channel to use. But each speaker in the system will feedback the bit error rate and things it has measured. So there's a very low data rate, uh, data transmission from each of the speaker back to the transmitter, and uh, to you know, to to basically you optimize the overall sy uh, system. Sure. And um, you mentioned a, a built-in DSP. Is that effectively a, uh, a bi-quad filter structure? Okay, that kind of go beyond my uh, okay. <laughs> my level here. So, yeah, I, I can take an action item and try to find, <laughs> find, out, find it out for you. So <laughs> the uh, this uh, WISA standard uh, is anybody else building uh, uh, modules or, or RX or TX that's compliant with that? Yeah, standard? the module is uh, today. Uh, we are the only manufacturer. And uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, probably in the foreseeable future, so we will probably be the only one, unless we, we can really prove to the market, right? We can sell millions of this every every quarter. Uh, yeah. We are not quite we are not quite there yet. So yeah, is anybody uh, able to? Uh, can somebody buy your ASIC and put their own radio together, or is that too complicated? Uh, it can be done, uh, but uh, that needs a lot of handholding, right? So we only, uh, so we can support this type of, so uh, I, I show there's a, a LG uh, 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 USB dongle there. That's basically, they buy the ASIC from us. They design the dongle themselves. So it can be done, but it's certainly uh, that that's a, we, we, we only support very select uh, selected uh, customers. 
So if somebody wants to come along and take make use of the WISA standard, how, how do they fit in? How do, they, uh, how do they fit into the market, I should say? Do they have to build their own uh, ASIC? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Certainly, oh, you mean somebody else wants to provide uh, a hardware, you mean, or how? how yes, I'm just trying to understand that the, uh, with the WISA standard, you made this open standard, so devices right. can interoperate. Right, uh, right, but for right. the moment, uh, you get uh, the Summit Audio TX and RX modules. Right, right, right. Uh, right. What, what other application is that for that WISA standard? Who else comes in and, and, and joins the party? Yeah, so far we have not really seen uh, a lot of the semiconductor companies or others they 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 want to do this, right? There's uh, other competing solutions, right? In in you know in the you know uh, in uh, in the market, uh, each of them may have a target different uh, segment, right? So some of these are particularly designed for soundbar, and uh, you know so maybe at a slightly lower uh, price point. Right, mm -hmm. and that they support fewer uh, channels, maybe a higher, a lower, slightly lower quality uh, uh, audio. So I think uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, Wise itself, uh, Summit is the only one. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, but we do, uh, you know, but we do work with third-party, uh, you know, uh, design house like a, a Stream, right, uh, uh, Sound Limited, and uh, you know, uh, others. So we, we integrate with their uh, uh, reference design, and we, we go to uh, uh, customers uh, together uh, that way. So. And for someone who wants to implement it, what's a typical kind of uh, project lead time? It sounds very drop-in. Is it fair to say it's pretty much a drop-in board? Uh, so that's if you use the, uh, the, this hands-on type of a module, right? So that's pretty uh, straightforward, right? But uh, if you like uh, some of these, uh, I think a lot of the high-end uh, customers, right, they are very particular about things. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I learned about the audio can never be good enough, right? You can always make it better. So a lot of times the uh, project can take anywhere from 12 to 18 months, right? So that, that's, uh, that's probably not atypical, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but that's, a, yeah, that's, I think that's, you can, yeah, that's probably a norm, right? Um, yeah. you're, you're talking about a lot of uh, very high-end stuff, but it's not exclusively for that purpose. Is there? Uh, is that just a sort of an entry point and you'd like to see it move into a broader range of products? Uh, it's definitely, right? So, I mean, uh, like, uh, so we work with, uh, uh, you know, we like a uh, uh, platinum, right? So that's a kind of a, I, I mentioned this, something like $700 type of a, a 5.1 right. system speakers. Right. Uh, we think that will be a perfect... Uh, uh, soundbar uh, replacement, right? So for that price point, you can see a lot of the soundbar actually has offers at a much even higher price than that, right? And uh, so uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, my uh, my uh, team member in Japan actually he uh, set up this uh, uh, whole system in his basement, right? So he has a uh, something like thousand dollar Sony soundbar, and then which the then set up the uh, 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 platinum uh, you know system there. So just this instant AB uh, comparison, uh, there, you know, so basically, you know, for the customers we have invited to his, to his basement, and generally you say this is really no comparison, right? So you, it's, it's a, it's a, you can virtualize, uh, you know, you know, any way you 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 want, but it's not it's still virtualized, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Is there any possible future for the technology to move to headphones? Uh, which means battery powered, basically, doesn't it? Right. So today you have to put a big battery there you know, to yeah. get it to yeah. work, right? So we do. We are thinking actually uh, take some of the algorithm here uh, we have learned, uh, porting maybe port them into uh, Wi-Fi like uh, 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 silicon, right? Yeah. So then uh, try to maybe capture the best of both worlds. And uh, in some of the applications, right, maybe you don't really care about, uh, you know, DFS uh, as much, right? So not in kind of a, in, in this, it's a nine meter by nine meter room, like for a headset type of uh, application. So that's only uh, uh, the things we are working on. So stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, there's, so there's uh, uh, fundamentally there's a power cost for getting enough bandwidth to do multi-channels uh, uncompressed is that is that how it sort of works out uh 
Right. Yes, I think that's only the main, right? So also we need to scan on the uh, channel. So I right, scan on the uh, other uh, channels. Right. So they make a certainly uh, at least on the transmit side. There's a you know there, there's a that's generally we run into uh, 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 you know troubles in terms of power, right? And uh, receive side actually you you know you, you you can just pick the slot that you that you that you need to monitor, and uh, you know that that's uh, you know I think that's. I think that's uh, doable in terms of uh, cut down power for the uh, future. Yeah, so that that's only possible. Yeah. Do you think there's um, uh, any pushback or, or uh, kind of uh, mindset of people that uh, a cable must be better than a wireless device? Do you find that? Uh, well, there as a Dave just uh, mentioned, right? People are willing to pay a thousand dollar a foot. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, speaker wires, right? So I, I, I think there's a definitely a lot of those uh, uh, people out there, but uh, you know, but the, once they get a chance to listen to a good, you know, BNO speakers or system, you know, uh, pairs of system audio speakers, and uh, you know, maybe they will change their mind, right? So I think that's a, uh, you know, so that's why I think the high end, the premium brands will be for us to basically to prove in the uh, uh, technology. When they go into these, uh, you know, the, the the shops, right? So that's how they experience it, and uh, you know, so that, that I think, uh, yeah, it's always there, right? So uh, you know, even I can imagine you know, there'd almost be a case to uh, try and make that the uh, wireless link would be superior to cables because you just don't have these antenna running around the room. You, I mean, the cable acting as an antenna or picking up noise and things like that. You send a pure digital signal and uh, locally uh, decode it. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, that's, yeah, so, right, so I guess, uh, but cable, they can still sell you other uh, gadgets, right, so these, yeah. uh, the risers and the things, right, so there's a way to make it better, <laughs> but yes, I, I definitely uh, agree, right, so uh, it's all digital uh, uh, signal, and uh, so, you know, you know, there's a way to kind of, a, you know, kind of recover it, you have a DSP, you, you can make, make them sound much better than what they, what they, Really are right, so I yeah. think that that will be the uh, the uh, the uh, you know direction that you know uh, the future is going. The challenge yeah. is uh, certainly one is that certainly uh, is that uh, you know whether your wife will allow you to buy a system, right? So that's yeah. uh, what I learned in my house. So once you have a good audio system, you tend to play loud, right? So you know, wife doesn't always always like it, right? So right? Yeah. so then uh, so yeah, but once but uh, once the uh, but the setup is really e easy, right? If you get a chance to go to uh, Amazon to see uh, platforms, these are kind of uh, the mid-tier uh, speakers. Uh, there's a people who actually give a very good uh, uh, feedback, just how easy it is to uh, to uh, to put it together. Yeah. yeah. And so um, uh, just uh, what I'm, I'm getting is the, the ultimate goal is to get the TX into the TVs and then uh, speaker manufacturers uh, put the RX in their box and, and that's done. So uh, like yes, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, so yeah. I think we are not there. You, you, as a, you can probably see, right? Uh, your BNO TV is not the typical TV when they put sure, the, sure. right. So certainly, uh, so that's why you need to have this, uh, you know, this, you know, intermediate step, right? So to have uh, these are uh, either through USB or through HDMI, and uh, you know, so uh, I, I, you know, we think eventually, uh, you know, this hopefully this will become kind of a you know, uh, kind of a, just like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, right? So just for audio. Yeah, so. fantastic. All right, very good. So um, that's a lot of discussion on uh, Summit and uh, WISA. I see that uh, WISA is traded on the NASDAQ. Yeah, that's right. So that's the uh, Summit's uh, stock symbol. So ah. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's a bit of a mix. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Okay, that's, that's very good. So... Um, I guess uh, we'll we'll put the information for contacting James and Summit in the description below on this video for everybody watching. And of course, if you like what we're doing here, please hit uh, like and subscribe uh, so that you can get these uh, videos every week. They publish every Monday on, on YouTube. So thanks, Simon, for coming in from Japan. And a very special thanks to James for taking uh, time in his early evening to call in and tell us all about uh, Summit Wireless and WISA. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Good to talk to you. Okay.